Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Jack and Glenn, Glenn channel. The Jack and Glenn channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. Uh, man, tonight we, I'm going to be reviewing uh, Ready to Love, Make a Move, episode number two. Um, man, enjoying the show. Once again, if, uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the bell notification. Uh, let's get into this right here. Uh, this debacle, this mess, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very good episode, though. I thought it was a decent episode, episode, uh, episode number two. I'm starting to enjoy this format of, of this show. Uh, what we see first here, we see Tamika Lee, who is the matchmaker on the show, right? Tamika Lee is sitting there uh, with Zadia, with Ashley, uh, with Sharice, with Venetia, and she's letting them know again um, that I'm going to arrange dates for you guys this time. You arranged dates last time. This time, I'm going to arrange the dates for you, and I'm going to make I'm, I'm choosing the men, right? I'm going to do my job. My job is to be the matchmaker. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make matches, right? So she can make matches. And so she brings in these four gentlemen, four guys that come in. She brings in Maurice. Uh, she brings in uh, Ramon. She brings in Marcus. And she brings in Cameron. She lets everyone know who they're going to be with. Sharice is going to end up with Marcus, uh, Maurice. Her and Maurice is going to end up going to a date on a date. Zadi is going to end up with Cameron. Uh, Venetia is going to end up with um, Marcus. No, Venetia is going to end up with... Um, my man's name, uh, Ramon, and and then you have um, Ashley is going to end up with Marcus, right? So once again, Cameron is going to be with Zadi is going to be with Cameron. Sharice is going to be with Maurice. Um, Z uh, Ashley is going to be uh, with Marcus, and Venetia is going to be with Ramon. So we have these dates going on. Uh, we first see uh, Zadia uh, and Cameron go out on a date. It goes to like a little restaurant in downtown New Orleans. Uh, down, well, down in New, in New Orleans, uh, a little loft type place. And they start to discuss uh, um, just their interests, right? He tells her that he's a doctor, which is a, he's a pharmacist, uh, but he also deals and dibbles and dabbles in photography right he's an entrepreneur he's been an entrepreneur for most of his life um and so he likes doing different things right he he's global with his photography he owns uh, he has people that work for him throughout the world uh and doing photography uh zadia tells him that she's in the fitness and things that she does they both are you know very focused uh on their careers and they want to be able to um intertwine their lives and they found that they had a lot of things in common right they both kind of uh, from atlanta uh they both ended up in skew uh, universities in houston around the same time just didn't didn't meet and know each other the conversation between those two were was good uh you can see that, that she's feeling cameron more than she was feeling jabari maybe because your camera is more closer to her age they have more things in common i really didn't understand why she went out with jabari anyway from the last episode um maybe it was just something to do right uh something different she just wasn't she wasn't feeling the guy uh that she previously went out with or the guy that she was talking to richard and she had to find somebody so she went with jabari uh her and cameron like to hit it off having a great conversation um you know, and decided that there will be another date, right? They, they, they're going to end up going on another date. They're going to get up having more of a connection later, uh, more of a connection. We'll get back to them a little bit because there's a lot goes on with Cameron and Zadia that we did not see, right? Uh, which leads to a lot of the issues that go on in this episode of uh, Ready to Love, Make a Move. Uh, then we uh, go on and we move on. We see Marcus. Uh, we see Marcus and Ashley, right? Marcus and Ashley uh, on their date. And you see Marcus, uh, you know, bring their activity, active wear, right? Uh, he gets, he has his bike. He, he rides a bike, brings a bike for her and Ashley. Both of them go bike riding. Ashley says she hasn't been on a bike in like forever. Haven't been ridden a bike in a long time. Uh, actually might not even know how to ride a bike or remember how to ride a bike. You know, people always say, you know, it's like riding a bike. You never forget. Well, she forgot, right? She forgot how to ride this bike. Uh, but the conversation was there. Marcus takes the lead. He gets her to a gelato shop. Uh, where they sit down and have some gelato. And this is where Marcus messes up, right? He said, oh, yeah, you look beautiful in that yellow dress. Bruh. Bruh. One more time. For the people in the back. Bruh. You should at least know what she was wearing. You were looking at Zadia, right? You wasn't looking at Ashley. And Ashley recognized that. Yo, yo, you was looking at me. If you bring up yellow one more time, I didn't have yellow on. I had tan on. Bruh, mine was all up in that. I guess Zadia's yellow was so bright that it just kept her, kept his eyes Focus on the yellow and not on the one that he had to go with. You got to be attentive, bro. You assistant principal. All right. You got to be able to focus on, on the kids. Pay attention. Uh, but nice. They both learn that they do have a love for kids. 
Um, they both uh, want to make kids succeed. Uh, Ashley talks about how she was a speech therapist uh, before she ventured into being an entrepreneur uh, and that she really wants to make sure that children succeed in life. Uh, this was a good conversation between those two, man. They had a good dialogue. Um, you know, you can see where uh, Marcus was trying to make up for his mistake uh, that he made by calling uh, Ashley Zadia. Uh, you didn't see the, too much chemistry, but you saw the, the conversation was good. And she was really... Uh, because of his passion for kids, that she really was in tune with his passion for kids. And it was something that Donald did not have. So I thought their date was a little cute. Uh, then we saw Sharice and Marcus uh, go out on their date. Uh, Marcus, um, excuse me, Sharice and Maurice. Maurice is an attorney. I, uh, he likes going out on dinner and, and meeting people. Doesn't like to be a homebody. Uh, he does own his own practice, right? He owns his own practice, uh, which is good for her because she likes money, right? And she's an entrepreneur, so she's business on business mindset. Um, during the dinner, during the conversation, there's some flowers who are being brought to Sharice, which was, which is a good gesture by Marcus. He had them delivered while they was at the restaurant. I thought that was pretty smooth by him, right? 51 year old attorney. I got some smooth game right there. Uh, he introduced, he brought some flowers to her. And that was one of the things that she really appreciated. She liked that. He was thoughtful. It was real thoughtful for him to bring her flowers and treat her, um, as a woman in high class that he wanted that she wanted to be treated at. Uh, but then it takes then he finds then she finds out that, you know, Maurice has four children, has been married before. Right. Uh, she tells him that she has never been married. She doesn't have any kids, but he's been married, has four kids. And his youngest is 21. She still thought that was a little bit of a red flag that he has four kids. But I'm thinking here at this point, at her age and what she likes to date, it's going to be hard. Right. Hard pressed to find somebody in that age group that she likes. Uh, and her age group that she prefers not to have any kids. That's just my opinion, right? Uh, she's about 40. I think Sharice is in her mid-40s, 44, 45, dude, Mark is 41. Um, so it's hard in that age group not to find anybody that has any kids. Uh, if you find a man that doesn't have any kids like that, that's kind of like, and, and if you find any women that don't have any kids at that age, it's kind of kind of rare. I mean, at this point in time, hate to say it, but it is. Um, but while they're in Mr. Dinner, they they. Um, it's like pulling teeth because she's pulling questions out of him. And he just told my man, this food is really good, right? This food is really good. You would think because he's an attorney who have conversation for days, right? That he would be able to converse regularly. And, and then the conversation would just flow. It did not. It was like crickets. It was crickets. And she was pulling teeth. And then when she did get an answer from him, he was giving one word answers. Like, like you're supposed to get to know her, right? You're supposed to get to know me. You're supposed to get to, we're supposed to know each other and you're not doing any of that, right? Like, bruh, have a conversation, get to know her, right? How do you run out of something to talk about on the first date, right? I know you don't want to talk about your kids, talk about your bit, talk about your practice, find out what she does for a living. Hey, how do you do that? Matter of fact, how are you end up on this show? Like, you're beautiful. You know, why? Why are you here? You know, um, I mean, you haven't hooked anybody up yet. Why haven't you been married? Those are a lot of things that you can discuss. But he's just like, food's good, huh? Man, this food is really good. Food is really good. Come on, bro. Uh, I don't see this going. Even, this, this is not going to go much further. Not going to go much further. Uh, then you see Venetia and uh, Ramon. Uh, they go out on a little date. And as they on a date, she began to discuss, find out that Ramon had played basketball, right? He's a pro basketball player who just came back from overseas. Uh, and, and they both like their love for travel. Like she wants to travel different places. And some places he's been like France and, and Paris and uh, Paris is France, different places like that, right? He's been traveling, playing basketball all over the world. Then she asked him, well, when was the last time you had been in a relationship? And bruh got like, start stumbling and stumbling like, uh, 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 um, 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 uh, 2008 2008 was the last time he's been in a serious relationship. Now, does he? He's been with somebody. Uh, I'm not going to try to stereotype uh, basketball players, but you can figure it out, right? Um, she's like, he ain't been in no commitment. And then that relationship was only like for two years. So when you was in your 20s, when you was in a relationship, you're not committed enough. She like, she really said her vignette is like, is not serious enough. He hasn't been in enough. He doesn't have enough life experience to be with me. Um, doesn't have enough life experience to be there. And so that's how they date. When it wasn't much to it, uh, they answered questions. He did make her laugh. She did say, she said she had to make a, um, she had a decision to make. I think that's just production telling them, oh, I do have a decision to make. I think her decision was made up when Bruss said he ain't been in a relationship since 2008. It wasn't, didn't take her to say, oh, he made me laugh and I got a decision to make. That's production line. Uh, if you get it right to make you 
think that she really has a choice in the matter or that she's really going to she's really deciding between those two. It, it she is not, right? Then we get into the drama, right? Tamika Lee comes in and asks the ladies how they're doing along in the house, are, are there any issues, any problems, any situations? And we see Sharice. Sharice comes up and say, "Yeah, I, I kind of got an issue, you know. It was brought up about guys in the house." I have no problem, right? At this point, Sharice says, hey, "Look, this is the issue that was brought up. Uh, we talked about it. Zadia said, yeah, I did ask, you know, how did the women feel about guys in the house? Venetia said she didn't care. Ashley, like, look, I, I don't care, right? Sharice had an issue with it. At this point, Zadia says, look, I said, okay, no problem. <clears throat> Sharice still goes on, which makes me believe, did Zadia actually, when she said, okay, no problem, did the conversation stop? Did they really move on? Or Sharice, Sharice really, like, really stuck on this thing. Because Zadia even asked a question. It's okay for people to ask questions, right? I need to know how else do we set boundaries in the house if no one asks a question? Do you hey do you want me to bring toilet paper on a toilet paper roll, right? Do you want me to take it? Am I supposed to take out the trash? Who's taking out the trash? Who's buying the food? Who's doing all this other stuff? Those are questions when you're living with people, you ask. Zadia said, okay, you don't feel comfortable with men in the house. That's fine. We go and when we get on to it, we realize that Zadia really abided by the rule, the fact that uh um Sharice didn't want anybody in the house because later on we find out that Cameron came and picked Zadia up and they went out, right? So with this being said, if Zadia abided by the rules that Sharice set, which means I don't want any men in the house, so instead of bringing a guy in the house, Zadia went out, then what is the problem? Right. Somebody is, is something not being said. Did Cameron seem like he didn't when Sharice was talking to him later on, didn't seem like Cameron said he came to the house. He came to the house to pick her up and like never came in the house. So I, I don't get where the beef is at there. I understand. Now, this is where I have a problem with Zadia, because when it was asked, um, then Sharice goes on into, you know, kind of why she's pissed off and mad at Zadia because Zadia gets locked out the house. Y'all ain't, ain't got a key to the house? Nobody got keys, right? Nobody thought to get these four women keys. Like, they may not all stay in the house with filming. Like, they don't get it, right? Somebody should have a key to the house. Or all four of them should have keys to the house. You women who live in a house. Let's have keys, right? Makes sense. Um, so, either way, Zadia goes out with Cameron, as we mentioned. We find out, find out later, but I already we got to tell the whole story. She goes out with Cameron, calls Cameron. They go out, and they have a conversation. They talk all night long. Uh, and then Zadia comes back in the house around seven o'clock in the morning. Sharice said she was waking up, uh, not really up, but was up, whatever you call it. Zadia calls her, which believes that Zadia called the other girl. Did she call Venetia? Did she call Ashley and no and got no answer? Or is Sharice is the number, the only number she had? But either way, she gets to Sharice and asks Sharice, can you open the door? Sharice gets up, open the door. Z I guess Zadia didn't say thank you. I appreciate it. None of that stuff. Uh, and, and goes back to bed. So now Sharice is mad because Zadia has stayed out all night. Um, she a grown woman, dog. Ain't high school, this ain't a college dorm. If she wanted to stay out all night, let her stay out all night with a dude. That's her. You ain't got to protect her. She felt like, hey, it's okay. I'm dating this dude. Stay all night. Now, unless production has a thing where we're not dating people that's not, when it's not on camera. Now, that has been a thing in the past for Ready to Love, that when you're dating, they like to have all this filmed. You're not supposed to go out with people when it's not being filmed, right? You're supposed to have content. Everything's supposed to be on film because they, they need they need content. Now, this has been a case, but we know if you follow Ready to Love DC, this cast was notorious, right, for doing stuff that was not on camera. Uh, they was doing stuff that wasn't on camera all that was never caught. Um, and so, and a lot of cast members said they was, they was a lot of party, a lot of the issues, a lot of problems were not caught on camera because they was having different parties. This is where stuff started. So, again, Zadia is back to doing what she had done in the previous episode, uh, previous seasons of Ready to Love, previous season that she was on for Ready to Love, having a date outside of camera time. I don't know. So, again, her and Cameron conversation. Sharice is mad. But Zadia lies. What are we, 12? Are we in high school, right? Tamika Lee asked you the question. Who stayed here last night? Everybody said me, 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 me. Zadia said, I stayed here last night. How old are you? How old are you? What's Tamika gonna do? She gonna beat you, put you over a knee, spank you, put you in timeout, ground you? Huh? For real? I I stayed out last night. Me and Cameron had a conversation. We we talked. We discussed things. You don't think anybody knows, right? 
It might have been a day off, right? I figured it must have been a day off. Production was around. They, they did their own thing. Fine. Okay, whatever. But be honest. I was out here like, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. I was here last night. And everybody knows you're lying, right? <laughs> everybody knows you're lying. Fess up. Tell the truth. So tell the truth. So now we, you know, that, that whole moment of awkward. They're looking at each other like they're crazy, foolish. Boom. Move on. All right, we move on now. They Tamika said, okay, fine. We're going to bring all the men today. You're going to make a decision between who you're choosing. Here we go. Sharice and Mar uh, Sharice brings Mar uh, Maurice and Antonio in. She chooses Maurice because Antonio has kids. There was no connection there. She heard Maurice is going to move on to another day. Uh, Venetia brings talks to Jabari, and she talks to uh, Ramon. She tells Ramon, because you don't have any experience, I'm not going to continue to date you. Conversation stuff was good. We had a good relationship. I'm going to stay with Jabari, for lack of a better term. Zadia calls in Jabari, and she calls in um, Cameron. We knew the Jabari thing wasn't going to work out because, again, uh, Venetia's with Jabari, the age gap, the whole kid situation from episode number one, not going to take place. So she tells Jabari, well, I got to let you go. Jabari, like, hi, right, we're cool. That's what's up. Let's dap it up. We can be friends. And she tells Cameron, I'm going to keep you. Boom. Uh, then you have Ashley. Ashley has a decision to make between Maurice, uh, between Marcus uh, and Donald. Um, she chooses to be with Donald and not Marcus uh, because she says, you know, Marcus, she wants somebody who's in tune to her. And it didn't seem like Marcus was focused on her, that he was more focused on dating and not worried about focusing her. Boom. Done deal. They all decided to, they, well, again, Ashley's decided to stay with Donald. Uh, Venetia's going to stay with um, Jabari. Uh, Cameron, uh, Zadia is going to stay with Cameron. And then you have Sharice is going to stay with Maurice. Here we go. But that's not the end of the show. Right, that's not the end of the show because Sharice was messy, right? Sharice was messy while they were at the party at the little mixer. She started asking Cameron's questions, right? Cameron questions about Zadia. We see on film Zadia see Sharice and Cameron uh talking. Sharice and Cameron talk. She walks the other direction, and Sharice is being petty here, right? Sharice is fishing for information, as my grandma would say. She's fishing for all the tea. She wants, hey, what's going on? This, what's that? What's, what's that? Uh, you know, you, you almost got me in trouble. Uh, you know, didn't bring Zadia home last night. He like, I didn't want to get in the middle. She called me to pick me pick her up. I picked her up. We talked till the sun came up, and I brought her home. Nothing happened. But again, Zadia, uh, Sharice is doing this for information. Now, granted, Sharice is very smart and very intelligent. Sharice is doing this, in my opinion, so it can be caught on film. Sharice is doing this so they we can, as viewers, can see, hey, I'm catching this girl in a lie. I want y'all to see that she's lying. I want y'all to see that she did hang out last night. I want y'all to see that her and Cameron were outside of the house just, you know, hanging out. Yeah, her and Cameron might have been talking about business, as she mentioned, in the house when she was talking about business. Uh, he's asking me business questions. Fine, that might be true. But you're doing this part, Sharice, being passive-aggressive. To keep things on. Now they get in the kitchen. They talking. They discussing. Sharice talking about yeah. Cameron. Cameron asked me about business. Cameron and is he really good guy? Well, I hope you really like him. I hope y'all can. You're be, you're trying to set Zadia off in the midst of the rest of the girls because it started out with you talking about Cameron and then it goes into the whole you know man thing. She didn't bring the man in the house unless she did and she's lying again. But none of y'all said that in your vignette, so I'm gonna have to assume that she never brought the dude in the house who stayed over there. I'm gonna have to assume that her and Cameron went out. So Sharice is bringing that up. Then she brings up the fact that, uh, you, you know, uh, you don't talk to me like that. I'm Look, I, I ain't coming here for all that. I want to make sure I'm safe, this, that, and the other. She's like, Zadia, like, I said, okay. I was cool. They both are strong-willed women who don't let things die, who don't let it go. This comment, this this right here is petty. It should have been over a long, long time ago. When Zadia said, okay, cool, no problem. She goes out, fine. If Zadia wants to stay out all night long, by God, she's old enough to stay out all, long, all night long. Just know Dr. Call Sharice to let you in the house. You should have banged on the door. We'll hope uh, Venetia and Ashley woke up. Because when you call Sharice, you let her into your business. And 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 Sharice, like, you didn't wake me up. You didn't say thank you. If Zadi said, I knew it was an issue, I'd have said thank you. You didn't have to make no as an issue to say thank you, right? Some things are just common courtesy. Seven o'clock in the morning, you open the door. Hey, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for letting me in. Man, me and Cameron had a great night. All right, I'm getting ready to go to bed. See you later. Blah, 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 whatever the case may be. It, it, it's nice to be nice, be appreciative, and move on. They will not let this die, and we 
fine and in the show with them two getting into it, them two having an argument about, you know, about waking her up seven o'clock in the morning. And kind of it seemed like as if Zadi was just laughing at Sharice, and Sharice went from zero to 90, right? Zero to a hundred. Hey, it is deeper. I also wanted to bring out too, uh, I don't think Zadi is really that much into um Cameron, or she just don't want to be touched, right? That's why I really believe that they stood up and talked all night long. Because if they had did something, um, she wouldn't have had an issue with him putting his hand on her back, right? When he walks her inside. If they had, if there was much more to it than them being up all night talking, you don't have a problem with him putting her hand on her back or putting his arm around you. It wasn't aggressive. Uh, Zadia did mention when she was out with Cameron that she had not had, they had not had any relations. Uh, she had not had any relations since June of 2022. So we'll see where this goes in episode number three. Uh, we're going to bring you episode number three. I think I'm interested. I'm built into the show. I'm locked in for the season. So we're going to make sure we give you all uh, the views of all the information on Ready to Love, Make a Move. Uh, Jack will be joining me in some of these reviews. Uh, but make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell notification. Let me th know what you thought about episode two. Uh, ready to love, make a move. What do you thought about Sharice and Zadia's um, argument, right? Who's to blame? Who's not to blame? Could have been over. It could have been avoided. And I think these two have not learned from being on their previous seasons of Ready to Love. I think they have not learned how to grow up or handle their emotions and feelings. Um, you know, we saw the Baltimore come out uh, in Sharice. Um, it's there, right? That's what you get when you, it's there. You see it, right? The, the hardness. Um, Got to relax. Got to relax a little bit. Not that serious. Um, not being disrespectful. And these women have to live in the houses. This is not the last time. Trust me. This is not the last time they 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 go at each other. I think this they're going to go at each other for the whole season. But nonetheless, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. Let me know what your thoughts is of this episode of Ready to Love. Make a move. Once again, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification. And we'll talk to you a little bit later. Peace.